This is the 3D tutorial demo. We're going to be using After Effects 3D, Per Character 3D, and the Cinema 4D Render Engine. So first you want to use the zip file. It's the AE Project Zip, the one that has all the folders in it. You want to use that to set up your folder structure. Now, if you don't have it on your desktop, if you come in to the actual page, it is available here at the top of the demo page. You can click on that to download it and then you can click on this to download the Illustrator files. So this is one of the demos and it should download. I'm going to download it to the desktop and then I can go to my desktop and I can move that into the folder that I've already set up into the AI folder. So this is an Illustrator file so it goes into the layered PSD AI folder. Now once you have that done, then you can go ahead and open After Effects. And if you already have a project set up, you can just open that one up, or you can start a new project and start a new composition. Make sure that it is the HDV, HDTV, 720p, 29.97. So all those are the right settings. And I'm going to call this one my last name. Well, my last name, first initial, and 3D text. Make sure that it is five seconds and check the 3D renderer. And to start with, we'll start with it in classic 3D to begin with. I'm going to click OK. So here it is, empty, nothing in it. I'm going to make sure that I have saved it. And I want to make sure I save it into the correct folder. And I'm going to save this as my last name my first initial, and O4 Tutorials, or you can call it 3D Tutorials. Either one works. I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid. I'm going to choose a light color. Let's choose a different color than I have recently because I want to make sure that you can see the, the ID mark against it. So I'll choose a sort of a nice pale lavender, medium purple solid one. That looks good. I'm going to Command S because everything so far has worked. I'm going to click in the 3D box to enable the solid layer for 3D. So I'm going to come down Here's your switches, and here's your 3D. Click in the box underneath it. Now you can tell it's been enabled for 3D because it gives you the different directional axes. So Z is depth in space. This shows you what way things are going to rotate. I'm going to save that again just to make sure. 
press P to open the position transform. And now I'm going to change the Z setting. I'm going to change it to a positive number. I'm going to change it to 100. So in Z space, positive numbers are further away and negative numbers are closer to the viewer. So now I've moved it back and you can tell since it's in 3D that there is perspective working because you can see that there's space around the edges even though this is a comp size layer. And that happens because when you look at things in perspective, of course, as they get further away from you, they look smaller. Now I'm going to turn on, under view, I'm going to turn on my rulers so I can see where things are. Just gives me a little bit more information. I'm going to save again. I'm going to make sure that I've got my toggle mask and shape path visibility turned on so it's blue because that will be helpful. I'm going to import the ID mark. So I right click, import, file, and I'm going to go to the 04 layered PSD AI and there it is. ID my flower, there it is, it's a nice blue color. I'm going to import it as footage because I don't need the layers. But it's still going to be an Illustrator file, which is a vector file. I'm going to drag it down into my timeline. There it is. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go down to create, create shapes from vector layer. See it's a vector file so it can take those vector information and make it into a shape in After Effects. Now the original file is still here and it's actually translated it into a new layer. This one is invisible, the eyeball has been turned off. I'm going to click on the shy guy so that he disappears and there's just a bump where the top of his head is. And then I'm going to go to the shy guy switch and I'm going to click on that and that will disappear. It's not gone, it's just hidden from view so it won't be messing up my timeline. I need that space, but I know it's still there if I need to go back to it. Now I'm going to press P for the position transform. And I'm going to move the ID mark to the upper left corner. So I'm going to change the coordinates to X. Well, I have to 3D it, sorry. 3D it first. So I've 3D'd it. Now I'm going to change the coordinates for the position to 210 for the X. That moves it over to the left. 185 for the Y. That moves it up near the top. And 20 for the Z. So that sets it just back a little bit. So there is our ID mark. I'm going to Command S because everything's working so far. I'm going to double click on the text tool to create an insertion point in the center of the composition. Type in my entire name. Now it's very small. I'm going to set the size. So I'll triple click in the middle of it so that it's selected entirely as text. And now I'm going to make sure I have settings. I want to make sure I have a text font that will work. So I'm going to use Arial because it is has no serifs and I can make it bold and it will look nice and sharp. I'm going to change the pixel height to 100 and make sure that it's bold 
I'm going to center justify it and I'm going to use the window align and I'm going to align it to the center vertically and horizontally. Now you can look and see if there's any of these letters that are too far apart and you want to kern them and I like to kern my name a little bit if you click in this use the text tool to create an insertion point between letters hold down option and use the left and right arrows you can adjust the spacing between the letters to your liking okay and I don't like it when it does that so let's go to fit okay Command save. Now I'm going to get my. I'm going to click off. I'll click the selection tool. That will help. <laughs> and then I will make sure that I've got the layer selected. I'm going to press P. Click in the box to make it 3D and then change the Y coordinate to 420. So it gives it some space. It's underneath the ID mark. Now I'm going to Command Save. I'm going to click in the gray area of the timeline to deselect it. And now I'm going to double click the text tool to create another insertion point. And I'm going to type Digital Designer. And I'm going to highlight it by triple clicking. I'm going to change the size of the, the font to 48 pixels. I'm going to make it 3D. And I'm going to change the letter spacing or the tracking so that all of the letters are further apart and in fact so that they stretch out as far as my name. So I want them to fill the same space by spacing them apart. And now I'm going to click on the gray area of the timeline to deselect it. I'm going to select the selection tool and I'm going to select the layer, press P, and change the Y coordinate until it is just underneath your name. I don't want it to overlap. Run it close, and I'm going to move it just a little bit so that the bottom of the V and the D are together. And that looks good. Command save. And now I'm going to click on the twirlies next to the names. I'm going to add an animator. I'm going to add the animator for Enable Per Character 3D. So this is a, a different kind of 3D. This is a 3D that allows you to move each letter separately, which can be lots of fun. So now that's ready. Command Save. So this is what you should have so far. And now we're going to move them one pixel apart. So we've got for the position So for the position 
we want to make sure that they're not on the same exact layer in ZSpace because it confuses the program. So I am going to put my name one pixel in ZSpace, and that, that should be enough to keep it from getting confused. Um, but of course, something goes wrong when you're when you're doing the actual um, rendering, and if it doesn't look right, then you can try moving those those numbers in the Z space just a little bit, one or two pixels at a time, to see if you can get them to render correctly. Because sometimes they will interfere with each other rendering. Now we're going to get a new layer. So Command S and then come up to Layer. New, and we're going to choose a light. And the first light we want will be a spotlight. And we want the spotlight to be white. We want to change the intensity to 90%. And it's going to depend on what the last settings that were used were, what exact settings you have in your lights when you're setting them up. The cone angle I want to be wider than usual. It's usually set for 90, and that is is way too narrow of a cone, cone angle if you only have one light. Um, it's it's small. Um, if you have it set for 120, then it should take in enough of the space. It'll light all the main objects in the scene, and you'll be able to see things better. We want to make sure that Cast Shadows is turned on. Cast Shadows is by default turned off, but you can turn it on and then you can set this, the shadow darkness. And let's go for 60, 60%. And then for the shadow diffusion, you can set that for 10 and say OK. And I want you to have a second light, but this light is going to be new light. This one's going to be ambient. Ambient lights don't have shadows. An ambient light is the light that fills the area. So we want the intensity of the ambient light to be lower, though. We want it to be 50. And you can give it a slight color if you'd like. Um, so if I wanted to make it so, sort of a light purple, it would just be interesting. So there's the lighting situation set up. And now we're going to take the material options of both of the text layers. I'm going to move the text layers so they're both together because we want to select them both at the same time. And we're going to press AA. And now we have to make sure that Cast Shadows is turned on. There you go. So you don't have Cast Shadows unless you turn on Cast Shadows for the layer. So there's the Cast Shadows. And now we're going to select both of the text layers and press P for position. Oh, wait, we have to go down and check the background and make sure by pressing AA, make sure that it will accept shadows, and it does, so we are in good shape there. So those are the things to remember. When you are using lights and you want to have shadows, you have to make sure the shadows are set on for the lights and on for the layers. You want to make sure that you have cast shadows turned on for each of the layers. You want to have cast shadows turned on for the lights and then for the whatever background you want to have it accept shadows and these are all separate settings you have to check those now we're going to put the CTI at three seconds and we want to click the stopwatch for the Y and Z position on each text layer okay so we're going to Come back to the text layers, press P, and we want to turn on the position keyframing. Okay, so this is the setting that determines where they are, right? This is where they're going to land. 
because this is the ending position. We want it to move into the scene. So during the first three seconds, the text will be moving into the scene. We go back to the beginning. On the name layer, you want to take the Z coordinate to negative a thousand. And then I want the Y coordinate to be 185. Now for designer, I want the Z coordinate to be negative a thousand and I want the Y coordinate to be 575. I'm going to save. Now I'm going to press the space bar and see what it looks like. Now you can see as the name and the and the title get to the point where they're getting in front of the light, it becomes bright. Lights are positioned at negative 444.4 pixels. And you can check that by looking at the position. And you see it's negative 444.4 in the Z. So since this is further away or further towards the viewer, as it's moving, it's behind the light until it gets to that point. And you can see that if you stop it from playing and come to where you start to see the light show up, you can see that that's getting to be about negative 444.4. So right there, it's exactly in the same layer for Digital Designer and then boom, it just gets just in front enough that you can see the light starting to shine on it. So that is how it works. Now we're going to change it to the Cinema 4D renderer. When you have set it to be 3D, the renderer is going to be shown in the upper right hand corner so that doesn't happen until you have a 3d layer but now i can click on this and i can change the 3d renderer to cinema 4d this of course is also available under composition settings but the quick way to do it when you're actually working on it is to click up here and here it tells you what's enabled what is going to work now and we are going to use extruded and beveled text and shapes that's what we're going to do right now. These things don't work anymore. Realize that masks and effects don't work necessarily. Um, blending modes don't work. Layer styles don't work. And uh, you just have to remember that some of these things are, and motion blur doesn't work, some of these things are left over from the Ray Trace 3D, which used to work with those things, so they have to tell you it doesn't work because some people think it will and it won't. So now we're going to go to each of these layers and we're going to select both of them, press AA, and we can set the bevel and extrusion for both of them at the same time. So let's change the bevel style to angular. Leave the bevel depth at 2. Add an extrusion depth of 20. Okay. 
And now you can see that since we have on the character description, there's a black stroke color. And if you don't have a black stroke color, you can set it now. You can click on the box and make it a black stroke color. And now you can see that the edges, which are the actual bevel, have turned black. It takes the color of the stroke and it turns it into the bevel for the letters. I'm going to make sure that's saved and now if you watch it moving through space you can see there is depth to it and there is the black stroke that is the bevel. Okay, let's save that. You can also choose to see it from two views. This can help. If you use two views horizontal, these are alternate views you can choose, but this one is the one that's most useful at this point. You can see this is the view from above. And the ID mark is just on 20, so there it is. And these are 20 deep. They have this extrusion of 20. And you can see that the, the extrusion goes back from the layer. So it's starting here. This is where it was without an extrusion. And now it fills back 20. And then this is the background layer. If you click on it, you'll see that it gets its little handles. So command save. And you can see where the light is. This is where the light is positioned. And now let's select the ID mark layer. Here it is. And I'm going to press U to collapse all of the layers here. And I'll choose ID mark. And I'll press AA. And now we'll give the ID mark a bevel. So let's change the bevel style to angular. And we'll set the bevel depth to 4. And have an extrusion depth of 40. So now you can see how far that goes. It gets very deep. It's twice as deep as the letters. Now you can always choose now to have the ID mark move and let's go for a rotation. So don't use orientation. That's for actually positioning in space. But and you can use that for other things later. But for right now, let's just do a rotation and we'll do a rotation on the Z. So I'm going to have it rotating the whole time. And I will make it rotate twice. And if you press the spacebar, you can see how that works. And then you can watch down here and see when the letters get close to being in front of the light. It's not going to show up. But if you scrub it, you can see it. So here we go. Scrub. <laughs> So it takes a while to render when it's 3D, but there you have it. Now if you let it run through one preview, which is, of course it doesn't do it to real time, when it has to do a lot of rendering, it will render at a lower setting or a lower 
frame rate, but then once it's gone through once, then it will continuously go at the right rate. And it has written it into the RAM memory, and it can use the information for the render when you actually output to make a movie. So now it's in there, and I will stop it, go to the beginning, make sure I've saved. Yes, there's no black dot, so it's saved. Go to Composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. And we want to make sure we've got the broadcast H264, high quality 720p HD, drag it, drop it, make sure it's the right setting. And now, because I let it do a preview, when I start the queue, it will render fairly quickly compared to what it would do if you had not saved a render. There we go. Very fast. And now we can close the queue. Make sure this is saved. Exit. Quit After Effects. And we'll go into the folder and we can check to see how it looks. Okay, so that is your basic animation in 3D.